and uh, you can see a small sunlight coming in there, but there's no bounce from it at all. On the other hand, we research, it had bounce and stuff, and it looks awesome, but it takes a lot of memory, we have to stream out everything. When you finish this game, you have to walk into that door, and there's a small room there that you have to stand in for five seconds <laughs> to go to the next room, because it takes so much memory for all the light maps to run in the console. But it looks really nice with all the shadows and everything. So all these shadows you see are pre-baked texture maps. So outdoor, there is where Frostbite 1 was pretty nice actually. We could have huge landscapes and it looks pretty sweet. Because, uh, yeah, it looks, looks pretty nice with, with that sort of system. Uh, Mirror Search had big landscape things, but not but city landscape, not a, not a terrain or anything. Uh, one thing that was very important for us is, is reflection. Because reflected surfaces is what gives all the surfaces life, basically. Uh, mirror sense, we did this really nice. We have areas where you put out volume and said, this environment map is going to be in this area. And when you walk to the other area, you get a new environment map, basically. Uh, one thing that mirror sense couldn't do that good, or, or, or um, one was that actually when you're indoor somewhere and you want to go out, you want to have the real reflection from the weapon, from the from the landscape and everything. So that was something that we worked really hard on. Uh, with DX11 you could get real time um, environment maps and that looks sweet. But I'm still talking about console. We want to release our games on consoles. Lights. Uh, we actually in Frostbite 1 we have some light areas. Everywhere that we had destruction, we couldn't have them. So everywhere that we didn't have destruction in Frostbite 1, we can actually bake, we actually baked some lights into to Frostbite 1 too. Uh, the same thing was with Mirror Search. All the lights you see here, they're also pre-baked. So if you shoot at them, you can't destroy them. That's something we wanted to do. We wanted to be able to destroy all the lights. So if you throw a grenade in there, you want all the lights to turn off. So, all the improvements we wanted. We wanted to be able to have a dynamic and destructible world with all the lights and with and don't have these static baked light maps basically. So first of all we wanted the further. That gives us the, the power of having millions of point lights. Uh, maybe on PC, not on consoles, now on mining it. <laughs> There is some limitations of these point lights in the third rendering on, on consoles. Uh, but we can have uh, a lot more than one for the web. We also want more lighting models for scattering light and so on. And also translucency is also a view mode that you light actually trans goes through materials. We also wanted something that was a big problem on research. I don't know if anybody recognizes this. Incredible. Does anybody know what this is? Incredible. This is incredibly correct. So every little green thing here is one light map being baked in a cluster of like 100 computers. This could take like two hours for a small lab or such. So the artist would like play, placing lamps and then go and click and then he could go to like take a vacation or something. Wait for this light map to bake. And it was horrible because it could crash in the middle also. Uh, and we go, fuck! And then we have to go in and like rebake everything. So we had a lot of computers doing this, and uh, it's not that optimal when it comes to workflows. We wanted to be able to change lighting and do stuff really fast and put our point lights or whatever, and then just go, oh, that's nice. Not wait five hours and then see, like, oh no, it wasn't good. I have to redo it. So another thing was also that we wanted everybody to work simultaneously on the level. Here is a funny picture that we had from one of our parties. Uh, but this is basically how we worked in Frostbite 1. Uh, first, the graphician had to go and put objects in there, environment artist put objects in there, and he had to let go of the level to the lighting artist. And then the, like, the lighting artist had to do his work. But then he, if he wanted to change something, the, the environment artist, or even design comes in and says, no, we don't want any crates in here. We have to go back and forth like that all the time. We couldn't have the sign placing objects while I'm actually doing lighting and while the environment artist is placing objects in the world, like trees and stuff that has nothing to do with gameplay. 
So it took a long time, we have to go back and forth and decide what to cut this level. We go, no, just cut my work. I've been working like four or five weeks for it. And we wanted nothing to do with that. We wanted like to, everybody works simultaneously on another level. Something that we had a big problem with also, both in your sense of value, was that all particle lighting didn't really fit into the world. Uh, we had to do special effects for every level. Basically, we all at the sunset level. We had to make our specific effects so they looked like they fitted to the well, like that color them, so they fit into the well. Because the particles couldn't really understand what the light was around it and how it actually looks in the well. And that made like effects and so on take a lot of time to do also. And we we couldn't like, oh we want to do the sunset level. No, you can't, because we don't have time to do particles for it. So we have to put rain on it, as the level you did before. Like, no, I don't want that. And we also wanted a better bloom. I mean, the simple bloom is just to take the screen and then just multi, like add it on the screen and then and then, it, and then like scale it down a bit, and that usually looks shit. Something also we were really interested in, or I looked in, was how film and how lenses work.